Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we have an amazing video in store for you guys. I am in my 40s, Shane is in his 50s, and Dr. Elizabeth Lambert is in her 60s, and we are talking about how to age your best, anti-aging, everything around aging, what not to do, what to do. I think these two look absolutely incredible. So yes, I was called to have them on for a podcast here in LA. I just feel like it's going to be amazing. You guys are going to want to stick around until the end. So let's get into it. You guys okay. look great. I thought we would start with what you guys think ages us the most before we get into all the secrets okay i would say uh, number there's a lot of things that age us uh number one i would say the sun certainly ages us and uh alcohol ages us eating poorly ages us yeah uh, our mindset uh people it's funny because the cells of our bodies have intelligence so i hear this all the time like when i say my age i'm 64 years young shane's 50 years young you're 41 years young yeah. the cells of our body they hear that it's like young there's all this possibility with youthfulness if you say if I say I'm 64 years old it's like oh my god so how you talk to yourself how you connect with your own physical body how you have that mindset of possibility makes all the difference and like just day-to-day -day, like positive self-talk and stuff right come well yes we can get I think it's bigger than self-talk it's really about energy and it's about um, consciousness mm -hmm. if you can begin to hone which all of us this is what we this is what we do this yes is, this is. is what we do for a living mm -hmm. so you when you begin to enhance your consciousness which certainly the way we eat and the way we live our life does that that really can reverse not just hold the aging process but actually reverse the aging yeah process. okay and i want to ask you guys now that you brought up eating what do you guys think are some of the worst foods or some of the things <laughs> that will age people the most because we all want to look good right everybody wants to look good yeah. feel good what will age us the most as far as what we put inside our body I actually would just love to add to that though. Like 10 years ago, people, my friends started to look like my father. Yeah. And that's when I started to really question what was going on. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that I came up with at the time was my deep trust of the universe and my intuition to feel the universe right. and the guidance for me. When we trust the universe, we have less stress in our Completely. body. And that stress actually will will provide a really a good environment for anti -aging. Completely, all that cortisol. So, yeah, it's, so it's like trusting the universe. And I would see my friends stressing out over money and just survival stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, I have that too, but I'm not stressed in the same way because I know the universe has got my back. I'm taking care of because I am like in this dimension. Oh, completely. Yeah. So, so I that's key. <laughs> and now those same friends are looking like my grandfather, you know, so it's like, you know, how we feel inside has such a huge part to play. Completely. And of course, what we put in our body. So the food, mm -hmm. I say this, this is what I say to all my clients and, and how I educate on the topic is that acids age us because there's only two sides to chemistry in the whole universe, acid, alkaline. Anywhere in the universe, we're right. looking at acid versus alkaline. Mm -hmm. So when I was like 27 years old, this guy came up to me one day randomly on the street and threw this book at me oh, literally? and said, that, yeah. literally threw this book at me and said, here, I, I think that. you need to read this. And the book was Alkaline or Die. Mm. What the, the heck? Book. Wow. Yeah, I so love that. I read that book and it taught me the difference between acid versus mm. alkaline foods. Mm -hmm. And that was when I really started to realize that there's a major importance of alkalinity. Completely. And yeah. also dis-ease cannot live in an alkaline body and it cannot live in an oxygenated body. Yeah, exactly. So important that we remember that. Yeah, so we can't eat cooked food because that has no alkalinity, really. The cooked foods go acid when you yes. cook them. And also, when you eat the cooked foods, what happens is it denatures the protein. Mm -hmm. So that's what causes all sorts of problems in the body. And it sits in the intestinal tract. I don't think people really realize when you eat foods that are not pure and living and alive, all of that sits in the intestinal tract. And I want yeah. to share this. I talk about this in my book. Mm -hmm. People don't realize, I coined the phrase, the infallible years, which is the time when you're in your you know, teens to 20s, and some people can go into the infallible years all the way into their 30s, when you can eat whatever you want, drink whatever you want, mm -hmm. and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You wake up the next morning, you're fresh as a flower, you bounce right back. But what happens is when we leave the infallible years, that's when 
things really start to show. Aging, the process starts to show. Yes. So if you can be very mindful and start, I would invite the audience, everybody listening here, if you're still in your teens and 20s and you're thinking, I can do any of these things, think of it as an investment for your future. Eat really beautiful living foods now, and then when you get to be 41, 50, or 64, you will be vibrant, you'll be radiant. And you'll Feeling be, great, too. And, and I can't remember. That's the energy. Exactly. Yeah, Go ahead. exactly. I can't remember if I said in the intro, I think I did, that we're all raw vegans for anybody who doesn't yes. know. But yeah, we eat only raw food and it's changed our life so much. So like what foods specifically you guys think are the worst, like the processed <gasps> foods and like the worst, like the worst thing you can <laughs> put in your body for aging? For me, yeah. yeah. For me, it's animal products. For me, it's meat, dairy and eggs because yeah. of the consciousness and the acidity yeah. and that it slows the digestive system, oh, which reduces elimination. So it increases toxic <laughs> load in the body, reduces elimination. That's the whammy that ages yeah. you mm -hmm. because very, very the acids true. build up. Yes. So processed foods do that, too. But animal products are, are an extra level of yes. acidity. I agree with that. And I would add to that is uh, alcohol because of the lack of consciousness. Mm. Because what happens is that alcohol is dehydrating, so it's not good for you to begin with. But also, when people drink, most of the time when people, now, if someone is a wine connoisseur and that's their, you know, that's their thing, I, I appreciate that. But for the most part, wine is very, it's not, not wine, alcohol isn't very good for you mm -hmm. and it's very dehydrating. And also the level of consciousness, it takes us away from higher consciousness. It's a numbing, it's, it's a numbing agent and it's a coping mechanism. So I think it's the worst, literally. Well, I, I, if pe when people stop doing it, it's like, this is the opposite. This is not a numbing agent. This is an enlivening agent. Yeah. yeah it so if you, you it brings you to life, whereas alcohol, it numbs you. And so people are like, no, but I want my wine. And the thing is, the three of us, if you, if you have like a chart, like you have from this end or all the way over to this end, we're living all, if then this is all junk food, in and out process. All, no, sorry, I didn't mean to say pick on one person in person, but all the junk food, all yeah. of the meat and dairy products. We're all way over here. But the thing is, even if you find your way over to here, the, just you begin to you know, like eliminate the meat eliminate the dairy, you're going to feel a million times better. Mm -hmm. Add a raw green juice, add a smoothie. So when you go out at night, just you can find yourself, oh, maybe I won't have an alcoholic drink. And I do, because mm -hmm. you said you used to drink and you don't drink at I all I used to anymore. drink every day. I yeah. never. I drink every day. I never drink. And it's, I feel like it's one of the most aging things. Like I stopped drinking. If I didn't, so I think I would look way skin. older. And so too, that's because... actually interesting because I never drank alcohol till I was 24. So all yeah. through my teen years, I didn't, never. where most teens are getting drunk with their right. friends. I avoided it. And also my sister would always lay out in the sun with her friends and oh. I never did because I was a goth kid. So I was like, oh, no, the sun. Okay. I'd stay out of the sun so and no smart. alcohol. Yeah, that's all through really, my teens and early twenties. It's funny you say yeah. that because I have an intolerance to the sun. Actually, I can't mm. be in the sun, so I'm like the vampire too. Right, and so <laughs> I, love I don't the sun. have. I don't have any sun, and I've never really drank alcohol. I can count on this hand how many times I've but ever like had it's, any alcohol. But it just changes you alcohol, too. And you know what? You don't sleep as good when you drink right. alcohol. And I yeah. feel like that's right. part of the reason that contributes to like aging more, because you're not getting a proper sleep, right? When you're Completely. Drinking. And then your body can't rest, repair, and fight off the free radicals or all that Completely. stuff. Completely. You know? Yeah, and optimism is so important, too. And I think when we yeah. eat uh, animal products in the factory farming, and these animals are not happy, and the adrenaline's in the product right. it, it stresses our body and then we lose our optimism yeah. we, we start to feel like the world is happening to us and against us instead of this divine orchestration that we're part mm -hmm. of like there's always a safety net by god for us that's really anti -aging. it's that's so true i'm gonna leap onto that one because that's really really true and also the more you have like these beautiful juices right here the more you nourish your body with this way what happens is, is it awakens your consciousness and yeah. it's this beautiful uphill spiral yeah. where you feed yourself more of this now you want to feed yourself more of it now all of a sudden your dreams are coming alive your uh happiness factor comes alive you're more inspired you get ideas for businesses everything opens up it's like one i always say small changes equal miraculous results you make one small change in the direction of what you want to go and and each one of us sitting here can tell you guys uh probably the dozens of stories in our, from mm -hmm. our own life of how that actually happens and it's really so i guess if we were going to give you guys like a first step it would be just 
try take a step in the right direction start mm -hmm. out yeah. with one of these beautiful juices Juliet, we did a, yeah. we did a we taught you guys how to make this yeah so in the morning when you wake up just make the choice i'm this morning i'm going to wake up and i'm going to instead of having instead of having whatever you would Coffee normally or have something even yeah yeah well, people are driven to look good and feel good, and then they buy into this protein narrative that we're supposed right. to eat animal protein and have high-protein diets and work out at the gym. However, this combination of stress in the body through working out plus high-protein creates mm -hmm. a very acidic environment in the body. Mm -hmm. So we're listening to this mainstream fitness narrative because we're so driven to look beautiful. However, that's the fallible years. We can only get away with that completely, in our younger years. Completely. And then by the time you're 40 and 50, you start to really look older. And so guys my own age in the gym in their yeah. 50s have fully gray hair, mm -hmm. big guts, and they're trying to overcome the burden that they put on their body. Yeah. And they get they push the weight and they get beat red and they don't look good. Yeah, they're true. straining. Yeah, one second. Okay, so both you guys, well, I don't have any gray hair yet. Um, I think if I did, oh, I would probably right. die, but I, have, I don't have any. You guys don't have any either, right? Do you guys I, dye your hair? I don't dye my hair. No, I don't, dye, no, my I don't hair. dye my hair at that's all. That's so funny. I have you a couple dye grays your... in, my, in my beard, but that's it. No, I do yeah. not dye my hair. Yeah, no I, at hair. 64, I still don't dye my hair. Wow, yet. okay. Yeah. So yeah. before we get into all the anti-aging tips, I just uh -huh. want to say a couple more things about things that age us. Okay. So I just want to yes. say as people get older, uh -huh. I think it's really common for things to happen and people get bitter, angry, yes. and I feel like that can really age people so much in their face. Like it's just like... Things can happen, right? Life can yeah. kick us, and you like it can stuff. be easy to blame, hold on to things like mm. financial difficulties, divorces, Completely. deaths, like all these things, traumas. Like, how can people let that stuff go? Because you guys are okay. the kings and queens of this stuff. So, like, how? So, one of the things is at every moment, we have the choice to either choose to put our focus and attention on where we want to go, no matter where we are at in our life, or we can put our focus and attention on the problem. And if we can begin to put our focus and attention on where we want to go, we start in that direction. Then what happens is the universe begins to open up. We get in alignment with our higher self. We get in alignment with our inner being. We begin to open up our intuition. We begin to get guidance. But if we're focusing on the problem, we can never find, the, we can't find the answers or the solution exactly. from yeah. the problem. Yeah. But if we can just take one step in the direction, I think this is the hardest thing for people too because we're, we're it's ingrained in us. This, if you can step, I mean, we all, we all say it this way, but step out of the matrix. If you can step out of that unconsciousness, the first thing I would say is turn off the TV. I guarantee you, you guys don't watch TV, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> I just watch YouTube, like self development yeah. stuff and the odd time. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. I devour, I devour audio books. I, I do like I, on audibles. I can devour three to five audio books a week while I'm working out doing all that mm -hmm. so begin to, to turn off the noise of the world and then begin to put your focus and what happens is that there's the fear comes up it lives one of the things i do for a living is i clear negative um negative programming and false beliefs which lead us to coping mechanisms and so what happens is if we can begin that's like a trigger reaction someone all of a sudden something happens and they will unconsciously go into fear and start spiraling mm -hmm. out so if they can just the first thing is take a breath mm -hmm. take a breath have a juice as silly as that might sound it's powerful and then yeah. you can begin to what is my next step in the direction I want to go. Mm -hmm. And from there, that'll take you to the next. The universe keeps open up and the next. So there's a saying that I live by, which is hold the vision and not the circumstance. Com so when Completely. we hold the vision, what happens is something miraculous. We hold a vision that doesn't exist yet for, right. per se. Completely. And the divine intelligence of the universe starts to organize information, organize people and network around us. Doors will open, yeah. we'll meet people that allow that vision to come into form. Completely. But what happens is that we are so poor in our mindset strategy. We have so little discipline in our mindset. Mm -hmm. It's like a weak muscle. We lose the vision instantly. So how many people here can hold a vision for an entire day without getting off of it? It's hard. Right? Right. Like, or even well, it week, takes practice, It though. takes practice to hold practice a vision. And I think it. as you get older, too, like you can get discouraged, things can happen. It'd be harder to get that vision and hold on to that vision and the feeling. Because I think it's important it's to feeling. have the feeling, too, right? Yeah. So well, we can't worry. The key, though, is to not worry about the circumstances, the details. Like, I don't have enough money. I can't pay the bills. I can't afford a raw vegan diet. I can't afford the, to make the juice. These things. I can't afford a juicer. That's Th just programming. It's, yeah, it's, it's not true. It's so literally, it's you, not true. If you picture a juicer on your counter 
every day from morning till night for a month on end, that juicer will show <laughs> oh, up. No, that's Completely. like Jim Carrey says yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oprah, he manifested that bike. So yeah. he really wanted a bike when he was little. Yeah. He didn't have one. And he manifested that like very quickly. And then it's he very realized true. this is how you do it. And look, he luckily and, realized that young. And right? you know what you do is that also if that you do exactly what Shane was saying. You put your focus and attention what you want, on what you want. And then if those doubts come up, that's when you use your tools. You take a breath. You keep putting yourself in the right direction. Reconnect to the vision. Reconnect and do that. And so, and what happens, it's like a muscle. You, it's like when you, we go to the gym, we go to the gym, we build up our muscle. It's building up the muscle and it gets easier. So if you just start. It does get easier. It gets, it gets I'm gets telling you, we really want you guys to know this. Like mm -hmm. it, it gets easier easier oh, yeah. Yeah. and also yeah. we should let them know we've been through difficulties it's not as if like we just have this really really we were talking when i was here last time in this moment right here and now is a big challenge i'm i'm going through a very big challenge right now mm. and the thing is it's not the challenge because you're always going to have challenges it's how are you going to choose to navigate that challenge all right what are you going to do are you going to put your focus and attention on the vision like you were saying on where you're going to go and if you can do that that's when the universe can start playing and dancing with us and opening up yeah so if you feel young you're whole life you're gonna be young Complete. that's the bottom line I you have to feel, feel young yeah i feel young too i feel you like are I'm like 18 20s. hanging out i feel like hanging out with you guys i literally feels like we're in our 20s yeah right? literally it's yeah. true it's it's complete you're right but it's not like you're not pretending as we take this on like i know you genuinely feel like you're what in your early 20s 18 20 yeah i feel like i'm in my 20s you guys yeah. absolutely 100 percent oh feel million better times better. Oh, except with food. the wisdom and the age oh my gosh. wisdom and then you get the best of both yeah, worlds. Then please. you get the fun and the wisdom and the yes. knowledge of how to navigate. And not caring what yeah. anybody else yeah, thinks. That's what exactly. happens when we age too is that our thoughts crystallize and we become stuck in our ways. Yeah. So we have to avoid crystallization in our body, the hardening, the slowing yes. down of our body. And you, so that, that all happens in the mind. We keep yes. ourselves fluid in the mind, we'll stay fluid in the body. And also by what you choose in your daily life to do. Mm -hmm. Like I go out salsa dancing. I'm everybody there is in their twenties and thirties, and I'm like, "Come on, let's dance." They're like, "Talk to Elizabeth. I'm tired." I'm like, "You're half my age. <laughs> let's go," because it's just it's an energy. Same thing at the yeah. gym. When you go and do these things, and it's not being. Let's let me say it in the let me say it in the constructive way. It's choosing to stay in your own narrative and getting out of the collective unconsciousness mm, narrative. Like, absolutely. I won't participate in that. When people yeah, are, correct. oh, I'm getting this, or oh, I'll. No, like, there, yeah. I guarantee neither one of you, there's no, no noise or conversation about that. You have aches and pains when in your 40s? Absolutely not. No, not no, when you I live no like this. I have no, I'm 64, yeah. I have no aches and pains. Yeah. Nothing. No. I'm still flipping upside down. I have a dance partner who flies me in the air. I do all these. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. So it's, it's true. The collective of narrative is very low vibration very due low. to the diet and the lifestyle yes. and the mindset of most people. And if we listen yes. to the collective, we're going to be sucked back into Completely. the collective. I call myself radically self-referencing. That's what I say. <laughs> radically <laughs> self-referencing. Yeah. So I live in my own true. world yeah, and I don't though. listen to people. No. I do not take advice from most people. No. I don't care what most people think or say. No. I live from within my own yeah source my yes. source energy is my guiding light that's where i take advice from. and like well, how do you tap into that well it's your higher self and it's it like is the higher self. here's the thing and it's in every single one of us intuition comes standard with every physical body it's mm -hmm. like a bicep we have it but it's a matter of learning no one's teaching i mean we're teaching yeah. this but no you one practices it this. i have a great story i'll just share real quick i was doing a practice with myself uh -huh. on how to develop my intuition i was probably about 30. And I said, what would be really cool is if I could go find a Matchbox car toy, uh -huh. like on the ground right now. Right. I would prove to myself definitively, yes. without a doubt, if I could tune into where a Matchbox car toy was sitting on the ground, right now it would blow my mind and I would know I've mastered this intuition. So I went into a little guided meditation. I thought, where is it? I got this impulse that I should mm -hmm. go to this nearby cemetery that was about a 30 minute drive away. I drove to the cemetery thinking, okay, I gotta follow through. I pull in. And I'm like, I have nowhere to go. It was a big cemetery. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Just guide me. I'll feel it. Mm -hmm. I drove around. I felt it. I stopped. I got out and the gravestone right next to me, there were two matchbox cars sitting on the gravestone. Can I tell you the word 
impulse. People don't, we don't trust ourselves because we're trained as children, not for, mo- for the most part, not to trust ourselves. But if we can begin practicing, I have to tell you a great story about that too because it reminds me of your story. That's an amazing story. That's yeah. an amazing yeah. story. Mm-hmm. I remember I was going through a really, I was maybe in my 30s as well, I think somewhere in my 30s, and I was going to this class. It was like a self-enhancing class. Mm-hmm. And I forgot my notebook. So I was like, oh, it was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon in L.A., West LA, like a nice part of LA. Mm. I was like, let me just, I ran upstairs, I grabbed my notebook, and in the amount of time I went upstairs to grab my notebook, come back down, someone had smashed my windows, stole my purse, and stole my bag, which had all my belongings in it. Mm-hmm. So, and like I said, this wasn't a very easy time in my life, and I just heard this like impulse, this inner guidance. My, I call it my little voice. Close your eyes and take a breath. And I literally was starting to, oh my God, oh my God, panic, and I just went, I just closed my eyes, I Mm. took a breath, and I heard, get in your car, drive down the street. And I said, okay. Drove down the street, got to a stop sign, and I got the impulse, go to your sister, she has a subterranean garage, you can go and cancel your credit cards. I stop at the stop sign, and the little voice says, turn to the right and look in the garbage bin. And I'm like, okay. I open up the garbage bin, and there's my bag. Wow. wow. And cool. I was like, I picked it up and I'm like, thank you, universe. Thank you, God. Mm-hmm. And then I, my own mind, which we want to learn the distinction, my own mind's like, my purse must be here. Okay. I start rifling through the garbage and I hear, baby, it's not here. Go to your sister's, cancel the credit cards. So I went over there and then I canceled the credit cards. I sat down on her couch and I said, what's next? Because I was really trying, what's next? And the voice said, go home, just go home. And I said, I have to go to my class, go home. I said, okay, I went home, I parked my car on the street and down the way on the street was a policeman holding a black hefty garbage bag. And in that moment, Spirit said, he's got your purse. Mm. And so I get out of my car and I walk over and I said, hi officer, I said, you have my purse, don't you? And he looked at me, because he recognized me from my license, and he said, how in the world do you know that? <laughs> and I tuned in, because I was like, do I say the truth, or do I just say, and it tuned in, and they said, just say lucky, you know, luck, you know it's just yeah. lucky chance. And so I said, oh, just a good guess, because he couldn't have heard the real truth of it. So I just said, lucky guy. I said, thank you so much. I said, can I give you a hug? I'm so grateful, thank you. So I gave him a hug, and I just went on my way, but it was like, just again, like Shane was saying, it's following the impulses and the more we trust it like we trust it so much yeah. more now you know what i learned from my exercise finding those matchbox cars is that there's a field cool. around us and it's like a net it's literally like a web yeah like yeah. the internet of the real internet <laughs> yeah and so we can access all information instantaneously all information mm-hmm. that's ever existed the impulse of where things are yeah. the impulse of thoughts, feelings, and vibrations that exist all around us are accessible at all times. This is why it's so important to be raw vegan and to empower your cells because we're part of that matrix. So if your cellular matrix of your body can tune into the matrix and the cellular matrix and energetic Mm -hmm. vibrations around you, you have a superpower. You literally become very high consciousness. You can literally defy the laws of physics. Literally in my course, I call it accessing your superpower. Like that's what it's exactly what right. It is. Because yeah. what's, it's like the example I was sharing with you. It's like our physical bodies, if we were a saxophone, mm-hmm. and if you have a beautiful, like world class saxophone player and he or she wants to play, if it's clogged with junk, they can't make it sing. So the divine wants to play through us, sing through us, create through us, dance through us, move through us. Mm-hmm. And if we're clean and clear, the universe can do that so much more easily. And we are dialed in. We have we have that access to be able to connect yeah. in. Yeah, I always say by being raw vegan, I can do the dance with the universe because the universe re- requests things of us sometimes. Yes. Like sometimes we have to step through thresholds of fear, like a portal opens, yes. but oh, that's mm-hmm. scary. Being raw vegan, you, you know the difference. Yeah. You know when there's an opportunity from the universe and you can feel that difference. Yeah. So then yes. the fear doesn't consume you because you're like, oh, this is my opportunity. 
let me get over myself, let me get out of my own way. And that all comes from awareness, cultivating our awareness. And that comes from all we have to do is, I say this to my private clients, if you can just be willing to be open to the possibility of saying yes, mm -hmm. where you have previously said no, miracles can happen. And this is mm -hmm. what we're all talking about. That's how with my mm -hmm. dance career, like mm -hmm. I literally was like, I used to joke in my, I always, I used to see visions of me dancing when I was a young girl and I for lots of reasons growing up I didn't I wasn't able to go down that path and when I was in my late 30s I used to say oh next lifetime I'm going to come back as a dancer and then that beautiful clairvoyant yeah. said you're a dancer she said she looked at me in the eyes and she said you're a dancer you will dance for the rest of your life and something in me went from no possibility to that much and the universe went and opened up like within a month I had no dance experience as a child at all within a month I was dancing on stage at this huge event in Beverly Hills mm. and it's possible not just for me now encoded in the cells of my body which is why I remember it mm -hmm. is the art of dance like mm. I was dancing in Egypt in Kemet I you know I have visions of it I could see that and do you feel like mm. that was like God speaking to you through somebody we were talking about Absolutely. that a little bit before yeah. yeah so how do we know I, to like listen we can, to we ask for it mm -hmm. like every single day Asking. you wake up yeah you it's ask. key to ask it's so always important. ask and we forget to ask mm -hmm. a lot of times but yeah. the more we're dialed in and then it's the practices like we were talking earlier you know meditating I chant also I you know we go to the gym we fuel ourselves with beautiful food we're continuing uh, continuing to elevate all the time these practices that we do honing our intuition honing our awareness mm -hmm. as we and it's also I think this is one of the biggest keys it's the idea that we are ever expanding just like the universe because most human beings they don't they think they're getting old like they buy they bought into you don't that. even say it i love it you're yeah. like, <laughs> i don't even say yeah. it i want nothing because so i i guarantee you guys are the same way every morning i wake up i'm going to the gym i'm going to be better i'm going to be stronger every time i go dancing i'm going to be better i'm going to be stronger we're going to talk about that a little bit too like getting old getting i shouldn't even say the word <laughs> right so what do you say when you use the term yeah. getting older getting younger circling the so, sun so i say well, i guess when your age changes well, you're circling. To like oh no no 40s say, 50s 60s like how do you oh i say circling the sun how do you guys do it in the gym because you guys are great with that like how, as we get older how important is it that we still exercise and things like that for for looking our best but here's the thing yeah, I, mean, I know you're going to say the same thing yeah. i guarantee it <laughs> it's not hard yeah. It's so the way we're doing. I mean, I'm not. If you look at my stories and you watch me on Instagram, no, I see you. You look better than people in their twenties at the it's, gym. <laughs> it's I have. Insane. I do my app exercise where I touch my feet up to the top, but it's not hard. It mm -hmm. it isn't. And if you if you're if you're dialed in. But is exercising anti-aging? Do you oh, think completely. it is? Yes, yeah. definitely. Why is that? A yeah. thousand percent. Well, for one, it stimulates the lymphatic system. So mm -hmm. it helps the elimination process. So mm -hmm. I think that when the body can eliminate effectively, it is anti-aging. It's when we get backed up with toxins yes. and the metabolic residues of food that yes. we anti that we age more quickly. Yes. So exercise stimulates the bowels, stimulates the lymph, which is our elimination that's system. That's a great point. So it's absolutely Yeah, key. that's Also, yeah. it's strengthening. I am the exact same body size, shape, and form I was in high school. I can put on my same jeans from high school mm -hmm. 50 years wow. ago, 50 years ago. And the only thing is I'm stronger now. So all it does, it doesn't, women, it doesn't bulk you up. It really, really doesn't. You don't have that much testosterone in your body. It's never going to bulk you up. It's going to lean you. You do the flexibility exercises. You do your cardiovascular exercise. It builds your cardiovascular, which strengthen, strengthens you. It builds the muscles in the body. And the, having more muscle in your body is very healthy for you. And Correct. what about, okay, I just got into working out more. What about creatine? I don't know if this has to do with aging, but do you guys use creatine or no? Um, creatine is is a common supplement sports supplement for getting yes. the body and energy source that it uses to maybe push out a couple more reps or whatnot but it's really not necessary to have I just, creatine I, yeah the problem with creatine or any supplement is mm -hmm. it's going to 
it's going to disturb the balance of chemistry in your body mm -hmm. and you're going to end up being more acidic which is more aging so right. if you look at people who overuse supplements because they bought into the fitness narrative and they want to look good yeah. it's like burning the candle at both ends right. you burn out quicker that's so true. maybe you look great for a decade but then you're going to look terrible beyond <laughs> and most of the time you're in your infallible years so you're exactly. going to look good anyway yeah, you're going to look good yeah. in your 30s and yeah. then by 40 you've, you're over the hill and you're all acidic and your body's deteriorating. And here's the thing, it's energy. Mm -hmm. I, I talk about, I have my Dr. Elizabeth's hierarchy of importance. Mm -hmm. At the top of that is mindset, awareness, and consciousness. So if you're up here, the energy, people are gravitating. It isn't even how you look. Mm -hmm. They're gravitating to your energy, your vibrational frequency. Mm -hmm. The reason you're everybody's loving both of you guys on social media is because of your frequency. They're mm -hmm. dialed into your frequency. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want to work on. We mm -hmm. want to work on enhancing our frequency, our consciousness, our awareness when we do that. Yeah, often I'll, I'll have private clients who hire me to work with them and then at some point we'll hit a trigger and they'll get upset with me and I'm like, hey, <laughs> I know that one you well. hired me because of my energy. You yeah. want the frequency I'm vibrating on and this is how we get there. Right, so right. But you sometimes know we have to move through triggers, we have to move right. through our fears and we have to move through these resistance walls that we've built up our whole life. It's like they hit a picture. They hit a fear picture. And that's yeah. usually what happens. Someone will hit it. And that's where courage and willingness. I want you guys to really hear this. It's not that we have these. I know I said this before, but it's really important. I really want your audience to know this. It's mm -hmm. not that we have these lives where it's just we're just sitting around all day and doing nothing. It's not mm -hmm. that. <laughs> no. I work my business. I know you guys yeah. too. We yeah. work our business seven days a week, but we love it. It's passionate. But it's about, it's about about how are you going having the courage and the willingness mm -hmm. that's so with those two yeah, things willingness. i tell my private clients and my group clients all i need is your courage and your willingness and with the courage it's not even you don't even have to do it you just have to be willing to show that's up. exactly right that's right? what i say all the time to my clients when they're at a threshold where they don't need know how to move past it like i work with people with finance and business i help right. people build businesses and they're always stopping themselves yeah. i say you don't have to have the money to right. like join my program or to work with me. You just have to say yes. The money's going to come. Completely. I might even gift it to yeah. you. But if you yeah, don't say exactly. yes, you're not going to get it. You got to say, it's, I'm having this. I'm claiming this. That's what takes a courage and a willingness. And you know what? We want to look at what, and I really want people to hear this. It goes back to all the no's and all the disappointments when you're younger and they sit in that fear. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's a matter of having the awareness to go, oh, that's just fear. That's a fear from way back then. It's That's not true now. I'm shifting this now. I'm having the courage. I'm having the willingness. Yeah. Let's move forward. And some, the reason I think we crystallize in our emotions that get us stuck is that we tell ourselves stories Completely. like this thing that happened to me was bad that's has, a story and it has a yeah. meaning yeah and I mean, it has it a meaning a so meaning we build up it. this meaning and this story around yeah. this happened to me yeah. and i'm afflicted by this thing that happened to me when yeah. that may or may not be true and it could have really been a blessing in disguise yeah i look back at some of the things that crossed my path <laughs> <Me too. laughs> i fell away and i'm like thank you for having that fall yeah, away like if if a, an alien comes down from space and asks you to explain the biggest trauma of your life that you've ever experienced and you start telling this trauma story to this alien do you think that really matters to them in the big picture of the universe do you think they're going to buy into your story and you know what the the best part of all this is is from a higher awareness it's like from that higher awareness it all falls away yeah mm -hmm. it really really does it falls away and the time if something does happen and kind of kicks us a little bit you us anybody mm -hmm. the recovery it's like you know what could have knocked someone else for a lifetime sometimes mm -hmm. people get knocked out for Thank i've you. seen people that get knocked out for a lifetime some people mm -hmm. for years some people for months when you're in this kind of awareness when you live this whole whole lifestyle not just the food but everything else the mindset the awareness the consciousness the intuition what happens is that even if you bump in with something you're bounce back is just like i know if i hit something i'm i'm out of it like and like this oh because you, you catch yourself oh mm. i'm stuck on something yeah so what <laughs> i, I do this. what i do is i allow myself to feel it fully you so if it's to. grief or shame or any kind of embarrassment or trauma or anything bad that happens yeah. to me instead of trying to compartmentalize it or stuff it away and say oh i got to get over right. that i got to get past mm. that 
I let it fully consume me. You well, you have to because otherwise yeah. it's a spiritual bypass. Yeah. You can't bypass it. Yeah, that's no. Yeah, no. you can't. You don't bypass it. What you do is you go through it. It's courage and willingness. Yeah. But and that'll shift it. And then maybe you're in your grief tunnel for a week, maybe a month, but it's going to move you through it quicker. Completely. Otherwise, that grief could consume you your whole life. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Yeah. I've and seen that'll it. age you. It'll take your youth, your vitality, and your, your energy. Life. It'll bring yeah. your vibration right down to baseline. Yeah. And all you it's have to do true. is sur surrender to the grief and the shame in the moment yes. and you move right through it. And then you have the choice point yes. of I'm going to choose my vision over the circumstance. Completely. Completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well said. You yeah. guys are just on fire. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I want to ask, do you guys think you would look this good if you hadn't turned to raw foods like however many decades ago and seven years ago? No. I know it's the diet. People always say to me, poo poo it on social media that it's genetics. <laughs> Has nothing to do with diet. It's no, genetics. You get a lot. They don't believe you. They don't believe okay, me. Okay, I flew Shane in here to LA from Texas, so I can confirm 100%. <laughs> Shane is 50 years old because I had to use the passport to book the flight. That's so we can put that to rest right now uh, because you get a lot of that. I've yeah, had, people think I'm yeah. lying. People think I use That's... filters and surgeries and all this stuff. But, no, but I went vegan at 17 years old. That yeah. was 34 years ago. I've been on this journey for three decades over yeah. three decades so every single thing i put in my body has affected where i'm at today completely without question yeah so i would mm -hmm. say for me it they all go hand in hand it's the food it's the mindset it's mm -hmm. the consciousness it's also the heart set mm. that is really love that. important the heart set is so yeah. important because that's it's like true body body mind heart soul and spirit it all goes together so when we can open up to all of that that's where the youthfulness is mm -hmm. so what I if you guys think. had yeah. a client right now that wanted coaching and they were like having a hard time touching base with that heart set and they were feeling <sighs> angry and hateful about things mm. in their lives and they were like how do i snap out of this give me some advice the first thing i would do is we have to look at what they're hooked in and mm. so what i would do is i'm able to go into the subconscious so with my, with my intuitive intelligence training go into the subconscious you look in present time and i'm able to read with their permission what's there what blocks are there then in real time say oh and then they're, they're like, how do you see that, Dr. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth? And I say, okay, with your willingness, let's move that. Let's move that. Let's move this. And then what happens is the thing that's been keeping them stuck, that's been blocking them, we move that out of the way. And with that roadblock out of the way, the heart melts. And it's usually like it's a pain point. It's a fear. It's a hurt. And so as we clear that, what happens is that now there's this opening and most likely they are, the people I work with are highly intuitive, highly intelligent, and highly sensitive. I'm sure with you too, mm -hmm. the people I work with. Yeah. And so that sensitivity has caused them to go into this, they, whatever the hurt is. As we clear that, what they then begin to do is they be, then begin to own who they really are. And yeah. then what happens <clears throat> is you can then go out. Now the fear of being yourself is, we've eliminated that and now, now the heart wide open. Then with the heart, with the heart set wide open, then there's there's no blocks in the way. Because when the yeah. heart's open, the heart and the so mind. So the the practice that I do with people is about parts of self and reclaiming parts of self that have mm -hmm. been fragmented yes. and lost in the past. When we have traumas or shame or major grief arises in our life, we fragment. Totally. And a part of ourself gets lost there and stuck yeah. there until we reclaim that part. And what I, and people say, well, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. And so I say, well, that's a living part of you now. You just have forgotten and you've stuffed it away and compartmentalized it. So we have to bring it back into present yeah. time. And the way we do that is crazy, but we actually have to lead with it. We actually have to make it a part of who we are mm -hmm. so much so that we're not ashamed that we talk about it and share it. Maybe we start a business around it. Maybe we start coaching people around what has hurt mm -hmm. us the most. Well, you know, and so by leading with it, we are yeah. fully transforming. We are fully owning it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's really parts of self work or shadow work. And yeah. I learned that technique from Debbie Ford. Oh, yeah. I know Debbie Ford. Yeah. I knew Debbie Ford. Yeah. yeah. And her sister, Ariel. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. It's really good stuff. Yeah. And I think we should talk for a second because this is a really good conversation for us about shame because shame is the thing along with the fear that keeps people from moving forward. Definitely. And when shame. we can really 
own that. And it's like, yeah. if you keep shame hidden, and what, because what happens is that, especially in families, how it grows up is that there's shame there. There's been shame in the family. Then there's the secret of the shame. So what happens is when we grow up in a family, we're in an isolated bubble. So we think the world actually is what is what we grow up with, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's like the world is, there's infinite possibilities of what, of what the world is. But as children, we don't recognize that because we just have this for the first at least four or five years of our life, that's all we really know. And so that secretive, that shame and secretness builds up. And so there's so much fear not to be able to say anything, and that stays with people. And when we can clear yeah. that, it's, it's like a so, huge relief. Yeah, I use the uh, David Hawkins map of consciousness. I love David Hawkins. So sh the shame <laughs> emotion is the I lowest do. resonating human emotion that yeah. exists. Yeah. And so one technique to get out of shame is to move to higher resonating emotions like mm -hmm. anger. Completely. Anger actually gives us courage. So it goes shame, uh, grief, fear, yeah. anger, courage. Yeah. So to get angry moves us into courage yeah. and out of shame. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're taught not to get angry, aren't we? Completely. Our mom and our family. So I give my clients permission to get angry. I say, yeah. so you got to really get angry. Yeah. Like at yourself, at complacency. Now, we don't want to direct the anger toward <laughs> ourselves or others, but we have to acknowledge where we have not been allowing ourselves Com to feel that. And we don't want to buy property there. We don't want to take yeah, a exactly. residence there. It's a, it, it's we a temporarily it's move a temporary through stop. It. It's just one of yeah. the bus stops. On exactly. Two. But you're right, as we do that, it's so important because a lot of kids have been shamed not to get angry, too. Yeah, that you're exactly. Not, yeah. And so when we can, have, we're growing up with shame and we fragment ourselves through trauma and we stay in shame parts of ourselves are in shame and mm -hmm. we're not allowed to get angry we will be in shame the rest of our life completely unless yep. you listen to an interview like this because yeah. really what can happen with somebody listening is like in the soul in the sixth chakra it's like a little something in it like my my clients they see me talking on youtube and they'll they'll write me dr elizabeth i want to work with you we've never met and they're like something in what you mm -hmm. said i just want to work with you i'm sure the same thing with you yeah. it's that mm -hmm. vibration it's that mm -hmm. resonance so i would yeah. say really pay attention yeah. to that resonance because that's our guidance system that's what that's what's leading us and then if we can have the courage and willingness to do that then what happens is that the opening happens and then what happens is the next opening happens and mm -hmm. then the next opening happens mm -hmm. and i'm sure you you yeah, saw absolutely. that with your youtube yeah, channel yeah, for sure. it was probably scary as heck yeah. the first time you did it oh like, yeah oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, and asking someone to be on you then you didn't know yeah. and you just but now it's like i see you calling yeah. all these people up yeah. and just, everybody it, just says yes everybody just says yes <laughs> yeah. because of your frequency and your energy yeah but you're just yeah, and we have to keep the energy moving through our body, reclaiming the shame, moving through yes. courage, moving through anger. It's so important. And if we do crystallize, if our energy stops moving, we get health problems. That's where fibroids, I, I work with people who, Completely. I, there's a trend. People come to me with fibroids. They want to do a juice fast and detox out the fibroids. Well, detox is important when we have uh, these stuck um, parts in our body. It's energetic. So across the board, right. everyone with this type of health condition, I see the trend that there is a part of themselves that is stuck and not moving. Come. It could be in a relationship. It could be in their mm. career or work. Yes. Something is not moving. It has crystallized and it is stuck. Completely. So when you move that energy, the fibroids will be gone. Wow. And, Completely. Yeah. And yeah. we can use juices and detoxification and natural lifestyle to but help that. But it has that. to be more than that. But it is it more than that. I, yeah. I'm, I always say to my clients when they come to me, Every physical ailment has an emotional, mental, and energetic aspect to it. And wow. when you clear yeah. the emotional, mental, and energetic aspect, yeah. it falls away. Absolutely. Yeah. It's wow. really powerful. Yeah, and yeah. aging, of course, is that. So, right? Thing. It's the same thing. It's so that's why we look thing. good for our age, because <laughs> we are not stuck in that. And what, I want to ask you guys, what foods do you think are the most anti-aging? I think for me, I think in terms of nutrient dense. Mm. Well, first of all, we were talking about this a little bit the other day, but most people are eating too much. They're, mm. they're trying to fill themselves full with something that is missing inside of them. So when you think of eating in terms of, okay, it's time for me to have something and I'm having it to nourish my body. What can I give my, like here, we have this here. 
I guarantee you this is going to nourish my body. So when I look at what does my body need and want right now, I ask myself, what does my body need and want? And then I give it that nourishment. But I think the first key is to heal the um, attachment to food. People have emotional, energetic, and mental mm -hmm. attachments to mm -hmm. food, not only as coping mechanisms, but as emotional connections. Mm -hmm. Mommy fed me those eggs, therefore I still, mommy loved me, therefore I have to eat the eggs because mommy loved yeah. me and she gave me the eggs. You know, and I have incredible stories with clients doing extended juice fasting, 40, 50, 60 days into a juice fast, and they have memories uh, mm -hmm. I had one client who had this memory of tuna fish, like almost tasting, smelling the tuna fish, but she was vegan for over 20 years. She hadn't had tuna fish and mm -hmm. her mom used to feed her tuna fish in her childhood. Exactly. So wow. 60 days into That's a juice sad. fast, she's having memories arise, clearing the emotional attachment Complete. to the food. It's so important. Yeah. So it's... cleansing, detoxification and fasting are incredibly powerful yes. ways to reset the neural connection between yeah. the gut and the brain completely so it completely changes our uh, the emotional attachment it's one technique that's very very effective i agree with wow. yeah. yeah 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 and then clearing the emotions as well that's one of the things i do with my, my clients is we go in there and we clear those connections we clear those wounds in present time and then what happens is that people have the freedom then mm -hmm. to be able there's not that connection anymore because once it's yeah. moved what i love about mm -hmm. it is once it's gone, it's gone. Once, because here's the thing the energy that sits in us that's causing us harm doesn't even belong to us. It yeah. never did. Yeah. It, it was thrown into our space most of the time when we were quite younger. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that we are, from the time we were in our mommy's womb until about six to eight years of age, we're, we're in a constant state of brainwave state. So anything that's modeled for us, anything that's told to us, anything that's mirrored for us, we take that in. It gets programmed into our subconscious whether we want it or not. Yeah. So these beautiful bright light beans come in. I'm abundant. I can start a business. I can do this. I can do that. Then they're caked on or like, I love that word crystallized. They're crystallized with these false beliefs and negative programming and all of this nonsense, this low consciousness that gets frozen in there. So when that's moved and, and the child at that um, hypnotic state, they don't have, there's no filter to block it. Now if someone says something to us, we're like, ah, I don't believe that. But mm -hmm. at that time, it goes straight in and gets programming whether you want it or not. So mm -hmm. it doesn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we clear it, what happens is that it never belonged to you. Whoosh, out it goes. And now there's so much freedom, which is what I know we all see yeah. with these people. I feel like sometimes we have things stuck in us, whether from our childhood or whatever, that we can't even remember. Completely. And that we don't even know. So it's like, how blind. do you tune in and realize what those things are to release them? Well, that's the work that I do. I'm able yeah. to go in and see. I see it clairvoyant. How do you I see, see it? it? Wow. Well, I, I'm trained in intuition and clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. So with like, couple several decades and so when I go in I can see it clairvoyantly I tune into their soul actually is what I do with their wow. permission I connect with their soul and then I'm in communication with their soul as well as the divine mm -hmm. and my own intuition and that's where we look and that's where they're always like God Dr. Elizabeth how would you see that and I mm -hmm. said well it's right there and a lot of times they didn't even remember it they're like oh. wow or I'll put it together yeah. I'll see that piece goes with this piece let's move that and then that's when we get the freedom Wow. Yeah. Mm. Which is really. Yeah. And um, to speak on other foods that mm -hmm. really help with anti aging, yeah. too, I think uh, nutrient density is absolutely key. And I call myself a nutritarian oh, more than a fruitarian I, or a yes. vegan. That's good. I call myself a nutritarian. I'm going to. That, cause yeah. I, I've been saying nutrient dense, right? Like nutritarian. Nutri better kick than nutrient dense. Right? <laughs> <laughs> May I borrow yeah. that one? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I love that. Because yeah. that actually trademark. nourishes, <laughs> right? So it, it nourishes our body rather than our Completely. emotional need. Nutrient Completely. density feeds our body's need, and it's not about an emotional attachment. So yes. we're freed from all that, and we're literally making choices that nourish our body. That's why right. I don't crave chips, soda, ice cream, or steak at all. <laughs> and guess what? If you 
want ice cream, we can make some chocolate and ice cream with cacao. Right, exactly. If you, and you, in fact, things. Crystal can make it for us. Do you guys think that, yeah. Crystal's, I love what you said. I love that. Do okay. you guys think that cacao is anti-aging? In my experience, like it's such a stimulant. It messes with my sleep and I feel like it you, ages me more. But yeah. you guys think I cacao is like a cacao. anti-aging oh, superfood? Oh, like the flavonoids and the oh. antioxidants in cacao <laughs> are key. I, oh, I have yeah. cacao every day. Yeah, I have it every I day. Have I know we do not know what I eat in a day I video. Know. Half your day is cacao. Well, I'm like, whoa. So also theobromine is <laughs> not a central nervous stimulant like caffeine. And so people misunderstand okay. it. And also theobromine dilates the blood vessels. What happens when we dilate the blood vessels? Yeah. More These blood to the brain. More, more, blood. Blo more blood to the skin. <laughs> more blood everywhere. More blood everywhere. <laughs> So cacao is excellent. <laughs> so instead of taking creatine, have three tablespoons of some raw cacao powder yes. in your morning smoothie. Yes. It gives you that dilation of the blood vessels, bringing more nutrients to the muscles, more power to the muscles, Completely. and and helps your muscles recover, and giving yes. you muscle mass, youthfulness. Okay. Yes. Yes. Do you guys think as you get older, how you eat affects your sex drive and everything well, as well, like thing. your sex I life? I laugh when they ask that question, <laughs> but I have to. But I have to say something first. I'm not getting older. No, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I, what term someone, do you? What term do you prefer? Like, I don't. I don't. No, nothing. No, no. He no, but I get me. it. Yeah. In my consciousness, there is nothing. Like, if you search, if you went around there, there is no level of any of that kind of yeah. unconsciousness. Yeah, I don't having control of our vo inner vocabulary is, is very important. Huge. There's thing I was talking about this on our podcast, on our podcast earlier. Yeah, uh, there's things I do not allow myself to think. Co it's just, just not in there. Like, it's okay, not in. Give yeah. me it's, two sentences you would never allow to think. Well, no, because you know what? We're not oh, going to yeah, pay attention. We're not going to go but there. But I want to answer the question. I want us. To, I <laughs> yeah. want us both to answer this question. So. So tell me again. Ask your question again that you asked. What with the with the O L D? But yeah, but, but well, I'm but, asking. You know, a way to, when you get older, what sentence would you use then? Oh no, so I wouldn't do that. But here's a way to let's see, let me tune into what you were really saying. So because like, I was saying about the sex drive and sex life, do you oh, think yeah. how you eat affects that as you get older? Well, that's a different question. Right? So like, let's talk about sex for a second, okay? Let's just talk about this. Here's the thing. People always say say to me like 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 it's a thing, and I'm thinking to myself. I might as well be 18 or 24. Mm -hmm. Like the sex is, well, first it's, oh, it's Muy delicioso. <laughs> but I'm more voracious now. It's like, it's just sad, like sex, but it's like beautiful. But now it's like, I never had unconscious sex my whole life. Wow. Ever, ever, ever. Because I saw like, I was like, that's the God in me here. And if I'm not connected with the God in you and the God in me, it was kind of like we talked about earlier, like it'd be like driving a Maserati or a Ferrari or a gorgeous, beautiful Tesla and then being handed a Pinto. Like the conscious intimacy is body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit. Whoa, all the way up. It's, you know, Kundalini. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. tantric sex. That's what's spectacular. So with the awareness and all of that, it's delicious. But there's nothing, like my body isn't any different. Nothing is it's the same thing. Yeah, and talking mm -hmm. about your body with aging, like <laughs> your legs look amazing. You have the legs, and people can say, "Oh, you can get work done," but not on your legs. You like, give me a break. Your, no. Yeah, and you don't do Botox, right? Because no, we I talked about that in the other video. Yeah, I can't. But do you Botox. do have implants. You're open about that. I totally am open about it. Because people like, will I say, "Oh, well, you have implants." If we're talking about the aging topic, they will here's say, the thing. "These don't keep me young." <laughs> And it's fun. I it's got true. them when I was 24 and I love them. And I, I was already like a bee before, but I think people get so attached. And we talked about this a little earlier. It's like, if you want to do something, you're not harming yourself or anybody else, go and do it. And if someone has a judgment, remember judgment vibrates at a very low frequency. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to join the party down on judgment, you're just making yourself older. Mm -hmm. And this person is going over out there having fabulous boobs. So you might as well let her have fabulous mm -hmm. boobs. Yeah, and, exactly. and you let go of the judgment and go get them if you want. Or don't get them if you yeah, want. Yeah, do but what's right for you. Do what's right for you. But it's the judgment. And it's usually out of fear. Mm -hmm. It's usually out of fear and insecurity. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there's an epidemic too right now with men and erectile dysfunction. It's insane, you know, right? Yeah, it's insane. It's so insane. It doesn't have to happen. Right. And 
and men think that by eating meat, it makes them more masculine. Yeah. However, the estrogenic hormones in meat will actually rob you of your natural hormones. And it blocks wow. the yeah. blood vessels, which and block the whoop. And it restricts <laughs> the blood vessels. So that's completely. why it's the epidemic. It's completely diet. And so a raw vegan diet opens your blood vessels. It dilates your blood. Completely. I mean, so it, it keeps everything flowing and working. And, and here's would you say like sex has been better for you since being raw vegan mm -hmm. versus before versus like eating everything? Yeah, if absolutely. If that's not too much for you, I'll cut it out. Yeah. I know you have a girlfriend. If you guys don't want yeah. to talk about it, I can cut it out. Well, absolutely. I think um, the consciousness that goes with completely. being raw vegan is next level. And there's yeah. no way around that. So yeah. like you were saying, the connection level is absolutely critical. Yeah. It's, I can't have sex with no. somebody that I'm not completely connected yeah. with. 100%. It's, just, it's no. not even possible. It's not even fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I would not enjoy it no. at all if I did. No. So I want to go mm -hmm. back to say... Um, when you talked about the blood, um, about raw food opening up the blood vessels, the other thing on the flip side of that, from the meat and the dairy and all of that, clogging the arteries, then what happens is they get high blood pressure, then what happens, and I want people to hear this, from that first high blood pressure pill you take, yeah it literally wow. that's where the, the conversation that's yeah. where that conversation lives about not being able to have sex mm -hmm. if yeah. you're and healthy, more pills like viagra and all this is so disempowering it's a very disempowering for a disempowering. man to take a pill to try to do that right when he's trying to overcome a problem that needs to be addressed in the first place so it's one cycle of disempowerment after the other and mm -hmm. it, it's exactly right it's one shame of more sh and then yeah. the other thing there's no connection there because Mm -hmm. you're the person so filled with shame how can you have the connection yeah exactly yeah there's no full body and there's no full body orgasms yeah, yeah. full body orgasm is not it's the physical and the first chakra but then you got the second chakra you open that up then you have the third chakra are you willing to open and surrender to the other person or are you fighting are you when am i going to call this person back when am i going to are you playing games or are you open in the third chakra are you open in the heart chakra, which mm. connects to everybody? Are you open in what you're saying while you're mm -hmm. making love in this chakra? Are you open in the sixth chakra to the other person? So you're connected intuitively, telepathically, yeah. moving, touching each other's bodies because you can hear the person telepathically telling you, go here, go there. Yes, I love this. No, over here. That's all telepathic. That's all six chakra intuition stuff. Then to the crown, then opening up to the divine, divine flowing all the way through us in this tantric making love. And would yeah. you guys only date other vegans or would you date people, somebody that ate like everything? Can I, you well, go first. For, you go for first. me, it's absolutely 100% essential. With my life experience and what I've been through at this point, 50 years old, I would not settle for a non-vegan and I probably wouldn't settle for less than high raw vegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's essential for connection. It's essential to be on the same vibration because the chasm of vibration would be too big. Not mm -hmm. only yeah. that, when we make mm -hmm. love, and this is especially important, it's important for the man, but it's really important for the woman, they enter us. And so they're literally going to deposit their energy, either highly conscious or unconscious, with all the toxins of the body or all the cleanness of the body into us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're left with that yeah. as the woman. And so, and it, for a woman, and I don't know if this is TMI, you can cut it out if no, it is, but it's really... On my channel, we okay. say everything. <laughs> so here's the thing. It can actually, if you're really, really clean, not only will it affect your energy if somebody who is you know, not as conscious is entering into you, but also if they're not eating consciously. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's such it, it a actually turn irritates. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a like, big turn It hurts, you, woman, hurts my body. The male, like, you know, like you said, they go inside right. you and like they release inside you. If they eat absolute garbage oh. and you don't, do you think some well, of that goes in you? When no, they a thousand percent you? Like, For sure I've wondered And the energy before. does. Yeah. That's and crazy, right? Yeah, I guess. That's why vegan men are better lovers, everybody. Well, here's the other thing. It's like, that's actually true. And remember, it's going to sit inside of you for with a woman for a very long time. Yeah. I will tell you the cleanliness of my raw vegan <gasps> girlfriend, oh. her energy and her breath and her smells are next level. It turns me on. <laughs> when I get close to can her, I, I when we kiss, yeah. I mean, I can feel it. I yes. can taste it. I can smell it. And it is amazing. I wouldn't go back. Do you know what's yeah. so funny is that 
someone who I dated very recently literally said the same thing. It's like mm -hmm. the way you smell, the way you taste, the way mm. you your energy. He's like you literally feel brand new. Yeah, fresh and that's and fresh. Clean. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that though is also clearing energy mm -hmm. yeah. because there's no and if you're clear, I clear energy every. Yeah. I'm sure you guys do too. Clear energy every single day, mm -hmm. and, and that's so, sexy. Clean oh, energy is the sexiest. So, it's yeah. so sexy. It's magnetic, right? Yeah, it, it is, is yeah. so sexy. A thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, this is this is not about sex and relationships, but okay. this came to mind before. This was another topic with the anti-aging. Don't you guys think if people eat too late at night, like oh. close to bed, that that's super Completely. aging? If they're eating yeah. meals right before bed or like, because I know they're... some, I'm not going to say who it is. If you're watching, you know I love you, but oh. I know somebody who eats Mars <laughs> bars at night in bed. Oh, no. oh, God. And like eating at night or even just, it's well, if you're raw vegan, it's better if you're eating raw food late at night. But yeah, having a break on the but digestion still, is important. I still feel because a difference if I even eat a big raw meal. For like, sure, like I do too. Yeah, then I have to stop eating by seven or eight, ideally. If I eat late, I me feel too. Like just tonight, completed. we're going to be eating a big feast because it's eight <laughs> o'clock and we just yeah. ordered a lot. I just ordered a lot of food. I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. So I want to share this also because I was thinking about our conversation that ties in with what you were just saying. I want to change the narrative from anti-aging to pro-youthing, pro-youthfulness. <laughs> I like it. Right? Because Is it going to pick up? But I like it. Well, here's the, well, it, it's for our own consciousness. I could care less mm -hmm. if it picks yeah. up. This is, for, this is for your enjoyment, for your enjoyment, for my enjoyment. And as we enjoy it, of course it'll pick up because it's delicious. Like mm -hmm. if you think in terms, if you're anti-aging, fight energy vibrates mm -hmm. at a very low frequency. Good so point. if you're fighting something, you know, you might as well kiss it goodbye. But if you're pro using, now you're thinking in terms of I'm extending. That's why I use the word 64 years young. I have more youthful than someone who's 24. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a fact. Which, so if you Absolutely. think, <laughs> but if you well, think in terms of that, and so if we can shift our awareness, like I remember, the, I remember reading the story where they asked Mother Teresa to come to a war rally, and she kept saying no, and they're like, "You're Mother Teresa, we need your help." She said, "Have a peace rally, mm -hmm. and I'll yeah, be there." Exactly. So I want, I want yeah. your audience to just close your eyes for a second. Just really, an, just close your eyes, tune into the energy of anti-war. And then choose, then tune your energy into peace. Mm -hmm. You can feel the frequency of the difference. I so anti-aging. Because yeah. you're or feeding whatever, you know. To you're you wanna... putting your attention. It's what we were talking about earlier about if you have an issue or a problem, put your energy and attention in where you want to go, mm -hmm. not on the problem. This is the same thing. We have to be impeccable with our thoughts in, and, our, and word. our words. And yeah, our Because our words actually are thought forms and they create our reality. Completely. So the words we choose are vital to the experience we're going to have. 100%. Yeah. So we're going to think of this in terms of how to because if you think mm -hmm. about it too how am i going to youth myself today like someone wakes up in the mm -hmm. morning they got a good night's sleep they got juicy sleep which is what i say the sleep you get before midnight is juicy sleep rejuvenates yeah. all the sex hormones now they wake up we're having our beautiful juices and now you look at how am i going to improve myself how am i going to youth myself today so you think in terms of that there's no fight energy yeah in that. there's no I'm resistance all for it. that's right mm -hmm. right there's and only... your book is skinny dipping in the fountain of skinny youth right the so fountain. are there any yeah. other tidbits of advice from there or anything else you can think of with staying young yes <laughs> I'm not trying to say like aging youthfully, you know, like, you know, pro. Yeah, you, th you think. You think. Okay, I will give you the secret, but first I want to say this, because even the term longevity, um, I spoke at this conference. It was the very first raw vegan conference for the Conscious Life Expo, mm -hmm. and they were talking about uh, longevity and longevity conferences, and I was thinking to myself, longevity, like who wants to be here for a long time? <laughs> I want to be here for a sexy time. I want to be here for a youthful time. If I'm here, I want to be here and have it be vibrant and radiant and yeah. juicy and delicious and sexy and youthful and all of that. So when we think in terms of that, it's so much more powerful. So I would say, you touched on it a little bit, but this is a really important key. I would say sleep is very important. Yeah, mm. I haven't slept in five years from my kids. It's so, no, it's, I'm yeah. right around the corner so though. It's so 
important. It's so important, it's right? It's so important. And really, I have played, I literally, if you looked up in the dictionary, this is probably, I started right when I was early 40s when I started salsa dancing. I started salsa dancing when I was 40. I was going to all the, I mean, every single night I was going out salsa dancing. They start at 10 and they go till 2. And I would dance for like four hours straight. I'd come home. And at the time I was being a professional dancer, so it was my lifestyle. But I'm telling you, I've gone to sleep at 2 and woke, woken up eight hours later. And then I've gone to sleep at 10 and woken up at 6. And then I've gone to sleep. My workout mm -hmm. partner's a firefighter. He gets off of work at like, five and we meet at the gym at five six o'clock in the morning and so i was going to sleep around uh eight nine at night and waking up around four or five and going straight to the gym all eight hour sleeps is not equal mm -hmm. i'm telling you yeah. the sleep you get mm -hmm. before midnight because those sex hormones rejuvenate themselves growth hormone all of that is rejuvenating itself it's a w incredible incredible mm -hmm. difference mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. And it's funny if I have, because, you know, I'm social. So if I'm invited to a party or if I go someplace, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's really interesting because if I don't go to sleep, um, yeah. if I stay up late, I feel, I almost have like a sleep deprivation hangover a little bit. It mm -hmm. doesn't feel, it doesn't feel as, as, uh, as good to me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that, that would be my Shane, what's it's your It's good for muscle mass too. If going to Completely. sleep before midnight helps keeping the muscle mass on your body, which so is anti-aging. So what's your, what's your, what would you add? Well, let's what's see. Your uh, the secret, the last word, the final word on <laughs> anti-aging or, or pro-youthing. <laughs> pro-youthing. Pro-youthing. Um, I would say fluidity in the mind. Oh, I, I see, I'll, as a man, I will yeah. speak to other men specifically. Men yeah. get rigid. Men get fixated. <laughs> they get their singular mindedness, which is a strength, is also their Achilles heel yeah. and they do not stay fluid. They become rigid and fixed and think yeah. that uh, their masculinity depends yeah. on uh, something that is uh, really actually detrimental to their masculinity, which is that fluidity so. in the mind, the fluidity in the body um, and not being afraid to be in tune with your intuition mm -hmm. and those more kind of esoteric um, oh. subtle energies. It's yes. so absolutely critical. There's nothing more unattractive to me yeah. mm -hmm. than a man who obviously is not into it, intuitive. Well, it's funny yeah. when you say that, because I was thinking, as you were speaking, I was thinking, it is so sexy when yeah. a man is in touch with his his masculinity, his strength, and also has yeah, that. Yeah, that's the most oh, sexy. Oh my goodness. And, and if you have that as an older man, like in your 50s, 60s, and 70s, that's next level. I mean, most yeah. people have lost that completely. It's and so I see, true. unfortunately, young men in their teens, 20s, and 30s even yeah. losing it, yeah. buying into this mainstream narrative yeah. that completely shuts you down. It's so And true. then you're going to look like an old <laughs> grandpa you. by 40. By, by 30. Yeah, by 30. It's true. It's true. I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay. I didn't say your name. I Nobody have, knows. <laughs> I have one more. Okay, go ahead. You finish So your I thought. stand next yeah. to men my own age. Uh -huh. A man who's 50. Most men look like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> they literally do. Most men, 90% of men my age look like my dad. Can when I'm tell standing you? next. And the last thing I said, <laughs> I was standing in front of a young woman about a couple months ago at this event. And, I, and she said, how old are you? And I said, take a guess. Because I thought that'd be fun. Right. I think she was in her late 20s. And I said, take a guess. And she said, 26. Oh, my God. I, I love was standing that. In, right in front of her. Right. And she I love guessed 26. That. I wow. love that. Yeah. Well, I remember I was at this event speaking and this woman raised her hand. She says, Dr. Elizabeth, she said, why do you talk to the men? You're supposed to just be talking to us. Because mm -hmm. I was answering one of the questions for the men. I said, honey, I'm, <laughs> at the time I think it was 62. I said, honey, I'm 62. I said, have you seen my dating pool? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> right. date my What's dating pool. What's the youngest yeah. you dated? The last guy I dated, well, one was 38 and one was 32. I, you see, you have such young but energy. It was not even, and they know my, it's yeah. not like I'm hiding my age. It's not like I'm, you know, you know, I'm very, I mean, you go to my social media, it says 64 years young, yeah. Yeah. but it's a so match So think about energy. most men yeah. at 64. You could, I couldn't yeah, imagine. Unfortunately. I couldn't imagine. Yeah. But like, I really match with, like, we want to go do the same mm -hmm. things. Let's go travel. Let's go out. Like, I remember one time I just, I connected with this guy and he was very athletic and he was, you know, it was, he was interesting. He was, I won't say what he did in case he might be watching, but he was, we had a really interesting career. It was interesting what he was doing. And we were talking on the phone. Phone. and afterwards I said well you know so let's know and he's like he's like you are charming he said and you are lovely he said you're gorgeous he said but I can't date you and I said really he said 
I'm exhausted just talking to you. He said, I just retired. I want to sit on the couch and watch no. TV. Oh, yeah. And he was 54. And I was, <laughs> oh, I, wow. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. But it's, you know, it's true. Like, Yeah. So the really the thing for what we're talking about, I think, striving for higher consciousness. Yes. To summarize it. Completely. To nutshell it. Striving for higher consciousness. Yes. Get out of the consciousness you're in now mm -hmm. and strive exactly. for something more. Mm -hmm. Break through your own little box that you're Complete. in. That'll make you youthful. Yeah. Complete. That's it. Yeah. And I, I told say, you you guys would like each other. Complete. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you guys are so Completely. similar. Mindset, awa awareness. Yeah. I know you said the word consciousness. Awareness. When you foster your awareness, yeah. just becoming aware is so important. Yeah. yeah, okay. You I'm guys always do these looking things? to bust out of my own little box. Completely. Like, no matter what box I'm in, I'm always trying to find the edges Completely. of my box. Well, yeah. that's. That's about yeah. expansion, being yeah. the best version of yourself. Well, if yeah. you guys can do that, I'm telling And it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. It's, yeah. it's what life so is about. It's so fun. It's you the get purpose so much of life. freedom. It's yeah. the purpose yeah. of life. To okay, be I got to ask you guys a couple more things because I checked my notes. Okay. It's important. People okay. will wonder. And you're so starving. So people even say, yeah, I ordered a bunch of food from <laughs> Wild Living Foods in LA, best raw food restaurant. But people will say even a raw vegan diet can be aging like what do you guys think about some people think high fruit ages you more so but do you think even a clean diet like this like why do you, and why do you think like well, maybe they say some raw vegans or vegans look older it has nothing to do with it it's consciousness it has nothing to yeah. do with you that agree? crap yeah. raw it's foods, consciousness yeah it is consciousness and, and it's also how you then, eat the raw food wow. and yeah. raw foods help the body eliminate yeah. i mean on a physical level our body needs to eliminate to yes. be youthful yeah. And so raw foods support elimination, period, oh, end oh of my story. Gosh. People talk about, like, they can't go to the bathroom. I'm like, are you kidding me? Eat, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Eat, go, that, that's my, that, yeah. that's what you do. It's like, that's how it goes. Yeah, so a raw vegan who has aged poorly or, or doesn't look good for their age, I, I don't even think it has anything to do with the food at that point. Has nothing yeah, it's just to who do. they are. It's their life experience. It's what they want to be doing. And they want to age faster. And that, that, right, because it's all a choice. Yeah, it's and a choice. in the consciousness, like like we were saying, there's no awareness of a quote unquote aging process in any of our awarenesses. Like it doesn't exist here. Therefore mm -hmm. it can't happen. It's not it it's not there. There's no matching puzzle piece for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna land here because there's no it can only some energy can only it has to match. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't match that picture, which is why when you clear energy and you clear the pictures, you have so much freedom in doing it the way you do it, the way I do it. It's it's wonderful because once you don't have a matching picture, then you have the freedom. Yeah, and consciousness is timeless and it's interdimensional oh, and it's formless. So when you embody high consciousness, you are formless and therefore your body is just a vehicle and it doesn't have to age. It doesn't have to be in the story of that at all. Not only that, what I always say is, we can step out of time into the divine. Like literally, like yeah. when I work with my clients, I'm not in the third dimensional realm. I'm in the upper dimensions and I take them, scoop them up with me in the upper dimensions. You're not aging in the divine and no space and time. It's like you're not aging there. Not not metaphorically, but literally. Okay, this not. just reminds me, I have to bring this up because before we got on, we were talking about um, this thing you, this person you talk to that tells you where on the map you should live. Because mm -hmm. we're talking about like even aging, living your best life as you get older, no matter oh, what I age like you are that. though. I don't know, what is this called? And you said they pinpointed Texas as a good area, like yeah. financially love this. So, so it's called astrocartography and it's how your birth chart aligns with lines on the planet. So depending on when and where we were born, there are certain areas of the earth where we will thrive yeah or me be more aligned with certain energies. So for me, my highest financial alignment on the earth is Austin, Texas. Wow. And Thank you've done God. like a 10X there, right? Or yeah, something. Yeah, so I moved to Austin two years ago in pursuit of this high energetic alignment with my finances. And since I moved to Austin, Texas, my business has probably 10x. Wow. Yeah. What was your main reason Two years ago. for moving there? Because you knew it was it a was good a big reason. Spot? I it love was a big it. Reason. I want to find wow. out where mine is. Yeah. And I'm headed there next week. So oh, it's I the high Austin, that. Texas okay. is yeah, the I highest. And then I've now consulted with this professional who does astrocartography to know my second, third, fourth, 
And fifth, oh, and I can yeah. travel and vacation to these locations. Oh, I and love so that. And so this guy who I work with, he works with all the celebrities. Like Steven Spielberg will hire him to scout locations to film movies oh, because wow. people at high levels understand mm -hmm. the, the, the ley lines of the earth and how important where we are geographically is. Completely. I yeah. really love that. It's really so cool. I so this that. guy studied 30 years in India, and he, he told me this. It was funny. The first time I ever spoke with him, he said his guru, who he studied with, told him to never tell Westerners the secret because he oh. said, Westerners are too dumb. They won't the understand. The secret all about this? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he said, don't tell well, Westerners. Well, I'm sure they're, some they're most are unconscious. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So, here's the thing. If someone vibrates with it, like we vibrated yeah. with it, so we'll appreciate it, we'll love it, we'll honor it. Because exactly. that's why they it's about me. honoring. It's about honoring yeah. it. And yeah. so yes. we will for sure honor it. I, you can maybe put a link in the bio or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay His name you. is Jade Luna, a little plug. He's awesome. He oh, actually I predicted, love. he lives in LA. Well, he's living in Joshua Tree right now, but really? he's from LA. And he predicted the pandemic. He's very intuitive. Wow. He's incredible. Oh, yeah. I, I want to talk to him. Yeah, he's well, cool. I love yeah, that. Wow. Well, I know for sure mine's not Alaska. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Right. Yeah, Mine's you felt that. Warm. Yeah. In fact, I always joke. I always say that the stork, I told the stork to drop me off either in um, Brazil or in Tahiti, and it got caught in the trade winds and <laughs> dumped me off in Alaska. I was like, what were you thinking? Right. Because I don't resonate at all with cold. No, like, I yeah, resonate no. with warm and tropical. Like, I, yeah. would, I like being, I know that for myself. Like, I have to be like right on the water. For me, that's just, it sources my soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. I got to get that information. <clears throat> and just one more thing I had in my okay. notes too. What about salt, you guys? Do you think salt? Interesting. I'm minimal on salt, but I'm not anti-salt. There's yeah. a time and a place for salt. Uh, mineral salts in celery and um, greens is the best source of salt. We don't really need a lot of added dietary salt, but I'm not anti-salt. You know why? Because I love life and I'm fluid with life <laughs> and I want to enjoy myself. So I'm a raw vegan, but I'll put salt in my salad dressing. You know, mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, in moderation, obviously, yeah, little okay. bits. I don't overdo salt. Yeah, me too. So for me, I get... Whatever salts I get, mineral salts I get in the celery and in the foods that have it, but I don't add food. And if I happen to eat something that's prepared and it has salt, I will notice it the next day and I won't like it yeah, in it, my it, body. Water retention. It does. Yeah, and I, you feel and it. so for me, it's like, here's how I think in terms of usefulness. If I was gifted two first, beautiful first class, well, all of us, we mm -hmm. were gifted to uh, Oh, let's say one, two, three, four, five first class tickets to go wherever in the world we wanted to go, five star accommodations. All we have to do is go home, pack, and get ourselves to LAX airport. Mm -hmm. I think that is in term of where I want to go for usefulness, vibrancy, radiance, all of that, the best being I can be. Mm -hmm. Why would I go one inch? in that direction. Like, I'm not gonna go home, pack my suitcase, and drive to Barstow mm -hmm. if my ticket for the first class flight mm -hmm. and first tower accommodations is at LAX. So yeah. I think in terms of, why would I go <laughs> one millimeter that way yeah. when everything I want is this way? So I think in terms of mm -hmm. life enhancement yeah. as mm -hmm. going in the direction, especially at 64, like, like why would I not? So yeah. for me, salt isn't really, like, I don't, and I don't really love it anyway, so I'm oh, kind of wow. like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's, okay. that's my story. Off, I gotta uh -huh. know, what do you guys eat in a day and what's your skincare routine? Okay. What do I eat in a day? I eat fruit. I eat tender greens. I eat sprouts. Mm. I eat raw nuts and seeds in moderation. 20% fats, 15% uh, proteins, 65% carbohydrates. I make smoothies. I sprout a lot. I eat a lot of salads. Oh, and I make juice every day. I have a green juice every day. Um, and my skincare routine is minimal. I just pretty much wash my skin and eat raw vegan. It's uh, the that's food. All. It's the inside. Yeah. It's what and you the put energy. In. Yeah, it's and the, the energy. It's yeah. The energy. I don't have a skincare routine really as yeah, a guy. Yeah, me I don't, too. It's I don't just really... it's the food. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Well, some guys do have skincare routines. They do. Right, have I guess so. My cameraman yeah. has a skincare routine. He's getting millions of views on TikTok. <laughs> he is just. Some guys do have skin routine. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so the reason I wanted you to go first because I was going to just about say, and I knew when, when you were talking, I was like, ditto Shane, mm. pretty much, except <laughs> I have a very low-fat diet. I don't have a lot of fats. They don't do that well in my body. Mm -hmm. And I have wraps, and I have, I have juices. Like before 
10 a.m. I've loaded up on tons of juices, tons of superfood smoothies. Mm. The one thing we didn't touch on that I really want to touch on is sea veggies. And I know you guys are going to chime in mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. Sea vegetables have more protein and more of everything delicious, minerals, vitamins, everything we need. Mm -hmm. And so if you can just put that into the smoothies or the whatever you want to do, the Sprinkle them over the wraps, sprinkle them over the um, salads. It's so, so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So ditto on yours pretty much, I would say. Yeah. And then for skincare, I do because I, from my family, my mother is Mediterranean. She has gorgeous, gorgeous skin. But my father was telling you, it's like, if this is albino, my father is click. Like literally, he's one click off of albino. He has mm. horrible skin. <laughs> yeah. And so I've always been very conscious of my skin. I've been always... Uh, taking really good care of my skin. And I have this skincare brand. You guys always ask me, so I wanted to show you. It's called Cyan. It's all natural, and it's an entire female-run company. And they're amazing. It's all natural. And when you put it on, it feels like velvet on your skin. Wow. And okay. so I love this. The sunscreen. You know how, like, because I use sunscreen, and the sunscreens, you can get it. It burns and you can put it in your and eyes. And sunscreen? Mm. Because last time, Elizabeth has a big video on my channel. I'll link below. But you were talking about the sunscreen. And it's people were asking which one. Cyan. So is it, that has the it's sunscreen a, in it? No, no, no. This, oh, this it's is the, same the brand. cream. I see. It's the same brand, but yeah. it's the but it's the sunscreen, and it's a mist, and you put the mist on, oh, nice. and it doesn't bother your eyes. It's eco friendly because you have to be conscious of that too mm. of eco friendly sunscreens. Yeah, and it just it's like velvet. And also, I'm not opposed to for skin. I'm as a woman, I'm not opposed to doing hyaluronic acids. I'm not opposed to doing, you know, things like that, glycolic peels, which are all natural fruits. Mm -hmm. I think that's perfectly fine. If you want to do that, I think it's amazing. There's yeah, no problem with that. Just do so, what makes you happy. Do mm -hmm. what makes you happy. And okay, mm -hmm. so if you guys could leave with one thing for <sighs> aging your best gracefully, what is one tip you guys would give? Or any other words that you feel called to share? <laughs> mm. Well, a raw vegan diet is an absolute essential baseline for a high quality of life, high quality of usefulness, high quality of vitality, and bringing that energy well into old age, 50s, 60s, and beyond. There's no question that a raw vegan diet is vital. It's essential. Mm -hmm. Striving for consciousness and getting out of your own box, being experimental and joyful and playful in life, mm -hmm. and uh, really not letting yourself crystallize in your thoughts and your forms, letting yourself be fluid and active and adventurous and courageous in life. Mm -hmm. That's what's most important. Well said. You just bring I... it out. It just comes out of you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're dialed in. It's mm -hmm. not an accident. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's like Dr. Elizabeth's hierarchy of importance. The top is mindset, awareness, consciousness. And from there, it just like where it all trickles down and everything falls into place when you start it's like if you start down here and like it's nice to start with the food and you start wherever you want to start but it's more like pushing a bowling ball or a boulder up the mountain if you start with the awareness everything all the other choices naturally fall into the place mm -hmm. if you start with the awareness then you're going to have you're going to have the consciousness to mm -hmm. make the right choices you're going to have the freedom i would say one of the biggest secrets is certainly for me me it's one of the biggest secrets is energy and playfulness mm -hmm. and That's amusement true. Like have fun, right? yeah. oh my goodness you guys amusement and not taking yourself or anything yeah. too seriously Absolutely. and really then the other last thing i would say is having a vision for your life and keeping your focus and attention on where you want to go courageously and willingly keep one foot in front of the other, keep stepping forward, mm -hmm. keep moving forward. And the other thing I would say, surround yourself with other beautiful light beings because one plus one does not equal two. One plus one equals infinity in the mm -hmm. mathematics of humanity. Yeah. Wow, and so, so true, Elizabeth. So, thank you, that's from and my what, book. One more thing, what were you saying about the people you surround yourself with? Your network. <gasps> oh, your net worth. Yeah, yeah, your network is your net worth. Completely. And connection is currency. Connection brings the flow of energy into our body. We have to surround ourselves yeah. with like-minded light beings. People on a similar path, empaths yeah, and light workers and modern mystics and seekers, truth seekers. This is so important yeah. because it validates that within ourselves. Yeah. And we get the same results of those who we spend the most time with. Yes. So if we are intentional about who we spend yes. time with, 
and joining my group coaching program is what I recommend to people for that to be around, you know, to be around other people. And it's, that's why I have it. That's why I created it. It's literally the number one reason. Yeah. So that people who are in lower vibrational states can be around higher vibrational people and it buoys them up. That's what it's for. And you have a great group. I've been in it since 2019. I'll link it down below. Come join us guys. And then let everybody know where we can find you guys. Same thing for me. It's like, I have a group coaching program, private coaching as well. And it's, important i created it because it's a community Mm -hmm. so you don't because my private clients i started working with private clients first they kept saying i feel so alone i feel i want to connect exactly it's the connection when we can connect with others Mm -hmm. because we lift each other up it's what i call the updraft factor and so when we can do that for each other it's so important and that's what allows us to move forward and expand and have everything we want health wealth love and career well you guys have blown me away in this and you guys are so similar i know them both so well yeah just met today (laughs) isn't that amazing these two were like on the exact same i love it so you guys were amazing i'm sure they added so much value to you guys if it did give it a big thumbs up right now make sure to subscribe go follow shane go follow elizabeth i'll put the links down below and i love you guys see you in the next one bye Bye. bye